Congregation, please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Dear brothers and sisters, on this most sacred night in which our Lord Jesus Christ passed over from death to life, the church calls upon her sons and daughters scattered throughout the world to come together to watch and pray. If we keep the memorial of the Lord's Paschal solemnity in this way, listening to his word and celebrating his mysteries, then we shall have the sure hope of sharing his triumph over death and living with him in God. And now my friends, join me in the blessing of this new fire. Let us pray. O God, who through your Son bestowed upon the faithful the fire of your glory, sanctify this new fire, we pray and grants that by these Paschal celebrations, we may be so inflamed with heavenly desires that with minds made pure, we may attain festivities of unending splendor through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now together we prepare the Easter candle. Jesus Christ yesterday and today the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega. All time belongs to him, and all the ages. To him be glory and power through every age and forever. Amen. Amen. by his holy and glorious wounds. May Christ the Lord guard us and protect us. Amen. Amen. May the light of Christ rising in glory dispel the darkness of our hearts and mind.
the light of Christ. Thanks be to God. The light of Christ. Thanks be to God. The light of Christ. Thanks be to God. Exalt, let them exalt the host of heaven. Exalt, let angel ministers of God exalt. Let the trumpet of salvation sound aloud our mighty King's triumph. Be glad, let earth be glad, as glory floods her, ablaze with light from her eternal King. Let all corners of the earth be glad, knowing an end to gloom and darkness. Rejoice, 
let Mother Church also rejoice, arrayed with the lightning of his glory. Let this holy building shake with joy, filled with the mighty voices of the peoples. It is truly right and just, with art and love of mind and heart, and with devoted service of our voice, to acclaim our God invisible, the Almighty Father, and Jesus Christ, his son, our Lord, his Son, his only begotten, who for our sake paid Adam's debt to the eternal Father, and pouring out his own dear blood, Wife, cling the record of our ancient sinfulness. These then are the feast of Passover, in which is slain the Lamb, the one true Lamb, whose blood anoints the doorpost of believers. This is the night when once you led our forebears, Israel's children, from slavery in Egypt, and made them pass right shot through the Red Sea. This is the night that with a pillar of fire Banish the darkness of sin. This is the night that even now throughout the world sets Christian believers apart from worldly vices and from the gloom of sin, leading them to grace and joining them to his holy ones. This is the night when Christ broke the prison bars of death and rose victorious from the underworld. Our birth would have been no gain had we not been redeemed. O oh, wonder of your humble care for us, O oh, love, O oh, charity beyond all telling, to ransom a slave, you gave away your son. O oh, truly necessary sin of Adam, destroyed completely by the death of Christ. O oh, happy fault, that earns so great, so glorious a Redeemer. O oh, 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 truly blessed night, worthy alone to know the time and hour when Christ rose from the underworld. This is the night of which it is written, the night shall be as bright as day. The ceiling is the night for me and full of gladness. The sanctifying power of this night dispels wickedness, washes faults away, restores innocence to the fallen and joy to mourners. Drives out hatred, fosters concord, and brings down the mighty. On this your night of grace, O Holy Father, accept this candle as solemn offering, the work of beasts and of your servants' hands, an evening sacrifice of praise, this gift from your most holy church. 
But now we know the praises of this pillar, which glowing fire ignite for God's honor. A fire into many flames divided, yet never dimmed by sharing of its light. For it is fed by melting wax, drawn out by mother bees to build a toy so precious. O oh, truly blessed night, when things of heaven are wed to those of earth and divine to the human. Therefore, O oh Lord, we pray you that this candle hallowed to the honor of your name may persevere undimmed to overcome the darkness of this night. Receive it as a pleasing fragrance and let it mingle with the lights of heaven. May this flame be found still burning by the morning star, the one morning star who never sets, Christ your Son who coming back from death's domain has shed his peaceful light on humanity and lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Salvation, you may extinguish the light. Dear brothers and sisters, now that we have begun our solemn vigil, let us listen with quiet hearts to the word of God. Let us meditate on how God in times past saved his people and in these, the last days, has sent us his Son as our Redeemer. Let us pray that our God may complete this paschal work of salvation by the fullness of redemption. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless wasteland and darkness covered the abyss while a mighty wind swept over the waters. Then God said, let there be light and there was light. God saw how good the light was. God then separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. Thus, evening came, and morning followed the first day. Then God said, let there be a dome in the middle of the waters to separate one body of water from the other. And so it happened. God made the dome, and it separated the water above the dome from the water below it. God called the dome the sky. Evening came, and morning followed the second day. Then God said, Let the water under the sky be gathered into a single basin so that the dry land may appear. And so it happened. The water under the sky was gathered into its basin, and the dry land appeared. God called the dry land the earth, and the basin of the water he called the sea. God saw how good it was. Then God said, Let the earth bring forth vegetation, 
every kind of plant that bears seed, and every kind of fruit tree on earth that bears fruit with its seed in it. And so it happened. The earth brought forth every kind of plant that bears seed, and every kind of fruit tree on earth that bears fruit with its seed in it. God saw how good it was. Evening came and morning followed, the third day. Then God said, Let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate day from night. Let them mark the fixed times, the days and the years, and serve as luminaries in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth. And so it happened. God made the two great lights, the greater one to govern the day and the lesser one to govern the night. And he made the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth, to govern the day and the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. God saw how good it was. Evening came and morning followed, the fourth day. Then God said, let the water teem with an abundance of living creatures. And on the earth, let birds fly beneath the dome of the sky. And so it happened. God created the great sea monsters and all kinds of swimming creatures with which the water teems and all kinds of winged birds. God saw how good it was and God blessed them saying, be fertile, multiply and fill the water of the seas and let the birds multiply on the earth. Evening came, and morning followed, the fifth day. Then God said, Let the earth bring forth all kinds of living creatures, cattle, creeping things, and wild animals of all kinds. And so it happened. God made all kinds of wild animals, all kinds of cattle, and all kinds of creeping things of the earth. God saw how good it was. Then God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and the cattle, and over all the wild animals and all the creatures that crawl on the ground. God created man in his image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them saying, be fertile, multiply, fill the earth and subdue it have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and all the living things that move on the earth. God also said, see, I give you every seed-bearing plant all over the earth, and every tree that has seed-bearing fruit on it to be your food, and to all the animals of the land, all the birds of the air, and all the living creatures that crawl on the ground. I give all the green plants for food. And so it happened. God looked at everything he had made, and he found it very good. Evening came, and morning followed, the sixth day. Thus, the heavens and the earth and all their array were completed. Since on the seventh day, God was finished with the work he had been doing, he rested on the seventh day from all the work 
he had undertaken. The word of the Lord. Please stand. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who are wonderful in the ordering of all your works, may those you have redeemed understand that there exists nothing more marvelous than the world's creation in the beginning, except that at the end of the ages, Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, Why are you crying out to me? 
tell the Israelites to go forward, and you lift up your staff, and with hand outstretched over the sea, split the sea in two, that the Israelites may pass through it on dry land. But I will make the Egyptians so obstinate that they will go in after them. Then I will receive glory through Pharaoh and his army, his chariots and charioteers. The Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I receive glory through Pharaoh and his chariots and charioteers. The angel of God, who had been leading Israel's camp, now moved and went around behind them. The column of cloud also, leaving the front, took up its place behind them, so that it came between the camp of the Egyptians and that of Israel. But the cloud now became dark, and thus the night passed without the rival camps coming any closer together all night long. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord swept the sea with a strong east wind throughout the night, and so turned it into dry land. When the water was thus divided, the Israelites marched into the midst of the sea on dry land with the water like a wall to their right and to their left. The Egyptians followed in pursuit, all Pharaoh's horses and chariots and charioteers went after them right into the midst of the sea. In the night watch, just before dawn, the Lord cast through the column of the fiery cloud upon the Egyptian force, a glance that threw it into a panic, and he so clogged their chariot wheels that they could hardly drive. With that, the Egyptians sounded the retreat before Israel, because the Lord was fighting for them against the Egyptians. Then the Lord told Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea that the water may flow back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and their charioteers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and at dawn the sea flowed back to its normal depth. The Egyptians were fleeing head on toward the sea when the Lord hurled them into its midst. As the water flowed back, it covered the chariots and the charioteers of Pharaoh's whole army, which had followed the Israelites into the sea. Not a single one of them escaped. But the Israelites had marched on dry land through the midst of the sea, with the water like a wall to their right and to their left. Thus, the Lord saved Israel on that day from the power of the Egyptians. When Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the seashore and beheld the great power that the Lord had shown against the Egyptians, they feared the Lord and believed in him and in his servant Moses. Then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord, for he is gloriously triumphant. Horse and chariot he has cast into the sea. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Let us sing to the Lord, he has called himself in glory. Let us sing to the Lord, he has called himself in glory. But the Israelites marched on dry land with the water to their right and to their left. 
Please stand. Let us pray. O God, whose ancient wonders remain undimmed in splendor even in our day, for what you once bestowed on a single people, for what freeing them from Pharaoh's persecution by the power of your right hand, now you bring out about as the salvation of the nations through the waters of rebirth. Grant, we pray, that the whole world may become children of Abraham and may inherit the dignity of Israel's birthright through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, all you who are thirsty, come to the water. You who have no money, come, receive grain and eat. Come without paying and without cost. Drink wine and milk. Why spend your money for what is not bread, your wages for what fails to satisfy? Heed me, and you shall eat well. You shall delight in rich fare. Come to me heedfully. Listen, that you may have life. I will renew with you the everlasting covenant, the benefits assured to David as I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander of nations. So shall you summon a nation you knew not, and nations that knew you not shall run to you because of the Lord your God the Holy One of Israel, who has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call him while he is near. Let the scoundrel forsake his way and the wicked man his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord for mercy, to our God, who is generous in forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. 
as high as the heavens are above the earth, so high are my ways above your ways and my thoughts above your thoughts. For just as from the heavens the rain and snow come down and do not return there till they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the one who sows and bread to the one who eats, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. My word shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, sole hope of the world, who by the preaching of your prophet unveiled the mysteries of this present age, graciously increase the longing of your people, for only at the prompting of your grace do the faithful progress in any kind of virtue through Christ our Lord.
Let us pray. O God, who make this most sacred night radiant with the glory of the Lord's resurrection, stir up in your church a spirit of adoption so that, renewed in body and might, we may render you undivided service. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Lectura de la Carta del Apóstol San Pablo a los Romanos. Hermanos, todos los que hemos sido in incorporados a Cristo Jesús por medio del bautismo, hemos sido incorporados a Él en su muerte. En efecto, por el bautismo fuimos sepultados con Él en su muerte, para que, así como Cristo resucitó de entre los muertos, por la gloria del Padre, así también nosotros llevemos una vida nueva. Porque si hemos estado íntimamente unidos a Él por una muerte semejante a la suya, también lo estaremos en su resurrección. Sabemos que nuestro hombre viejo fue crucificado con Cristo para que el cuerpo del pecado quedara destruido, a fin de de que ya no sirvamos al pecado, pues el que ha muerto queda libre del pecado. Por lo tanto, si hemos muerto con Cristo, estamos seguros de que también viviremos con Él, pues sabemos que Cristo, una vez resucitó de entre los muertos, ya nunca morirá. La muerte ya no tiene dominio sobre Él. Porque al morir, murió el pecado una vez para siempre, y al resucitar, vive ahora para Dios, los mismos ustedes. Considérense muertos al pecado y vivos para Dios en Cristo Jesús, nuestro Señor. Palabra de Dios.
The Lord be with you and, and with, with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Lord, When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of James, and Salome brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. Very early when the sun had risen on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb. They were saying to one another, who will roll back the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone had been rolled back 
it was very large. On entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a white robe, and they were utterly amazed. He said to them, do not be amazed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, the crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. But go and tell his disciples and Peter, he's going before you to Galilee. There you will see him as he told you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good evening. Are you tired yet? I'm a little. <laughs> Diego and Maritza, could I invite you to please come up and sit here? And Andy, if you want to come up, you can come and sit with me right here. Are you okay over there? You okay over there? Good. Well, my friends, I have prepared a homily for the adults but I'm going to save that for tomorrow because as far as I'm concerned tonight, other than Jesus Christ, you two are the most, well, you two and Andy are the most important people this evening right here in church. And so I'm going to sit down and have a little chat with you. Would that be okay? Are you nervous? Not really. How about you, Maritza? Are you nervous? A little bit. That's all right. It's all right. Now, I got to tell you, last year, around this time last year, um, because of the lockdown, we didn't have church, publicly at least. And so last year for the Easter Vigil, I got to go all out. You only heard five readings today, but last year we did all nine readings. And it was a long, long time, and we did everything that the liturgy called for that sometimes we kind of had to cut away because it's too long. So I got everything I wanted, but I have to say that it was the saddest Easter that I've ever been a part of. I miss my people. I miss the people sitting in church. And there was really not a whole lot of life in a sense that the Easter Vigil is usually called the mother of all nights because on this night, the church gives birth to new Christians. That's you guys. The church gives birth to new Christians. But last year on the Easter Vigil, there was only about nine of us here in church, and I wasn't able to baptize anyone. So it was very sad. However, this year, we're so grateful. We're so grateful to be here to worship God together, and we're grateful that we get to baptize you and confirm you tonight. Now, this past year, you have been going to class. You've been learning a lot about the faith, right? So if I have a pop quiz right now, and ask you some questions about the faith, would you remember anything? Not all of it? Okay, how about you? How much do you remember? Just a little bit, one or two. That's all right. You know, you only went to school for one year. For myself, when I wanted to become a priest, it took me nine years to become a priest. And I learned a lot about theology and philosophy and all sort of things about the faith. But my children, I want to tell you that the most important thing and the only thing that I want you to remember always, wherever you find yourself to be, and that is God loves you. God loves you more than you can ever understand. In the first reading today, you heard that God created the whole universe, and he created it in stages. But when it came to the creation of human beings, 
God made us in his image and in his likeness. God made us God-like. And everything else he said was good, but when he created human beings, he created us very good. And because he loves us, when human beings we sin, God sent his son into the world to die for us. You're not going to be able to find any faith, any religion in the world where a God would enter into the world to die for human beings. But Jesus Christ did. And he did because, he's, because he loved us. And tonight, when God allowed you to be baptized, he is going to claim you in a very special way because God is going to say to you, that you are mine. And because you belong to God, God is going to walk by you every step and every turn of the way. Now, just because we're Christians doesn't mean that things is going to be just nice and dandy and easy. No, that's not life. Life has a lot of hardships. Life has a lot of difficulties. But because we have our faith, the very faith that you're going to be baptized in tonight, we can be certain that no matter what happens in life, God does not abandon us. You know, God loves his son Jesus very much also, but he didn't stop Jesus from having to endure pains because sometimes that cannot be helped. Sometimes even as parents, you cannot take all the, way, the pains away. But what happens is that God walks side by side with his son, and then he raised him up from the dead. And that's what we're celebrating tonight, the resurrection of Jesus. And so we can trust that no matter what happens to us in life, whether good days or bad days, you just know that God loves you and that God is never going to abandon you. When we walk in earlier in procession, remember how dark it was? What was the only source of light? Do you remember? That candle. Very good. That candle symbolizes Jesus Christ. It represents Jesus Christ. And so in the midst of the darkness in this church here, the only light was Jesus. And so remember that, that sometimes when life gets tough and all you see is darkness, remember that Jesus is your light. Call upon him, talk to him, pray to him. I promise you, I promise you that Jesus will never, ever leave you alone. Tonight is a very special night. And I want you to remember it, April the 3rd, 2021. This is the night you get to be baptized into the church, into this great family. You become a part of this great family, and more than anything, you become God's own children. God says to you tonight that you are mine. You belong to me. I love you. And I will never, ever leave you alone. Amen? Father Merton, and the people of St. Paul Catholic Community, I have the honor of presenting to you the elect of God who will be baptized this night. Diego, Joel, and Maritza Emma, would you all please stand and your sponsor come forward. Congregation, please stand. 
Dearly beloved, with one heart and one soul, let us by our prayers come to the aid of these, our brothers and sisters, in their blessed hope, so that as they approach the font of rebirth, the Almighty Father may bestow on them all his merciful help. I invite us all to now stand as we call upon the intercession of all the saints. Almighty ever-living God, be present by the mysteries of your great love and send forth the spirit of adoption to create the new peoples brought to birth for you in the font of baptism, so that what is to be carried out by our humble service may be brought to fulfillment by your mighty power through Christ our Lord. And now we're going to bless the water, which will be used to baptize you and which will be used to sprinkle our holy people in just a moment. O oh God, who by invisible power accomplished a wondrous effect through sacramental signs, and who in many ways have prepared water for your creation to show forth the grace of baptism. O God, whose spirit in the first moments of the world's creation cover the waters so that the very substance of water would even then take to itself the power to sanctify. O God, by, who by the outpouring of the flood foreshadowed regeneration so that from the mystery of one and the same elements of water would come an end to vice and a beginning of virtue. O God, who caused the children of Abraham to pass dry shot through the Red Sea, 
so that the chosen people set free from slavery to Pharaoh would prefigure the people of the baptized. O God, whose son baptized by John in the waters of the Jordan was anointed with the Holy Spirit, and as he hung upon the cross, gave forth water from his side along with blood, and after his resurrection commanded his disciples to go forth, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Look now, we pray, upon the face of your church and graciously unseal for her the fountain of baptism. May this water receive from the Holy Spirit, received by the Holy Spirit, the grace of your only begotten Son, so that human nature created in the image and washed clean through the sacrament of baptism from all the squalor of the life of old, may be found worthy to rise to the new life of newborn children through the water and the Holy Spirit. May the power of the Holy Spirit, O Lord, we pray, come down through your Son into the fullness of this fawn. And holding the candle in this water, he can, so that all who have been buried with Christ by baptism into death may rise again to life with him who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. My dear elect, Diego and Maritza and Andy, you are called to participate in these Easter mysteries and the sacraments of initiation. In the promises of the Holy Spirit that you are about to make, you will be renouncing sin and making your profession of faith in Jesus Christ to be one with us in his holy church. My brothers and sisters of the assembly, you who have already been baptized, I invite you to also renew your own baptismal promises as our elect make them for the first time. And so I ask all of you, do you reject sin so as to live in the freedom of God's children? I do. Do you reject the glamour of evil and refuse to be mastered by sin? I do. Do you reject Satan, the father of sin and prince of darkness? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, was crucified, died, and was buried, rose from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father. I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the, the body, and life everlasting? I do. Members of the assemblies, please be seated. Diego, yo te bautizo en nombre de Padre y del Hijo y del Espíritu Santo. Maritza, yo te bautizo en nombre de Padre y del Hijo y del Espíritu Santo. Yo te bautizo en nombre de Padre y del Hijo y del Espíritu Santo. 
congregation, please stand. My dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may rise with him to new life. Now that our Lenten observance is concluded, we have renewed our promises of holy baptism. Let us rejoice and be glad in the light of Christ's resurrection. Dios Todopoderoso, Padre de nuestro Señor Jesucristo, que te ha librado del pecado y te ha dado la nueva vida por el agua y el Espíritu Santo, te unja con el, el carisma de salvación para que, incorporando a su pueblo y sea para siempre miembro de Cristo, sacerdote, profeta y rey. Queridos, ya han sido ustedes transformados en una nueva criatura y se han re revestido de Cristo. Que esa vestidura blanca sea para ustedes el símbolo de su nueva dignidad de cristianos con la ayuda de los consejos y ejemplos de sus familiares, 
conservenla sin mancha hasta la vida eterna. Amén. My dear children, you have been enlightened by Christ. Walk always as children of the light and keep the flame of faith alive in your hearts. When the Lord comes, may you go out to meet him with all the saints in the heavenly kingdoms. And now we will do the celebration of confirmation for Diego and Maritza. My dear candidates for confirmation by your baptism, you have been born again in Christ and have become members of Christ and of his holy people. Now you are to share in the outpouring of the Holy Spirit among us, the Spirit sent by the Lord upon his apostles at Pentecost and given by them and their successors to the baptized. The promised strength of the Holy Spirit, which you are to receive, will make you more like Christ and help you be witnesses to his suffering, death, and resurrection. It will strengthen you to be active members of the church and to build up the body of Christ in faith and love. My dear friends, let us pray to God our Father that he will pour out the Holy Spirit on these newly baptized to strengthen his children with his gifts and anoint them to be more like Christ, the Son of God. Dios Todopoderoso, Padre de nuestro Señor Jesucristo, que has hecho nacer de, nuestro, de nuevo a esos hijos tuyos por medio de agua y el Espíritu Santo, líbranos de pecado, escucha nuestra oración y envía sobre ellos el Espíritu Santo Consolador, Espíritu de sabiduría y de inteligencia, de espíritu de consejo y de fortaleza, espíritu de conciencia, de piedad y de, sus, de tu santo temor, por Jesucristo nuestro Señor. Cajetan, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Dimfna, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. And Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Please turn around. And my brothers and sisters, please join me in welcoming the newest members of the Catholic Church. Candles and return to your seats. As a community of believers, we are filled with joy and renewed faith. It is that faith which allows us to seek all we need, to trust that our prayers will be answered. For the church, that she may grow this, this night in the risen life of Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For all those who have been baptized and fully initiated into the church, in our parish and throughout the world, may they continually grow in their faith through prayer, study, and active participation in the body of Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For government leaders, that the risen Lord, may illumine their minds to create laws that protect the right of all stages of life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are suffering, that they may be free from their infirmities and created and recreated and healed in the life of the risen Lord. Lord, hear our 
we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people of St. Paul Catholic community, for the living and the deceased for whom this Mass is being offered, and for our private concerns, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord of life, tonight the resurrection of your Son renews the hope of the world. Hear the prayers of your trusting people and grant them in the name of your risen Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord have sacrificed at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all of his holy church. Accept, we ask, O Lord, the prayers of your people, that the sacrificial offerings that what has begun in the Paschal Mysteries may by the working of your power bring us to the healing of eternity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, 
But on this night above all, to law you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the ending, unending hymn of your glory as they are claimed. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we are brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be put out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim the death of the Lord and profess the resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body 
one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Paul and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you've gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you've summoned before you. In your compassion, O, o merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us share a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy. You should enter under my roof. But only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Christ. In the body of Christ. In the body of Christ.
Those joining us through the live stream, please pray with me an act of spiritual communion, saying, My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since now I cannot receive you, receive you sacramentally. Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Couldn't you tell I'm tired? <laughs> my lovely and beautiful people, happy Easter. Happy Easter, Father. What a glorious celebration. What a night and day comparing to last year. I tell you, it was sad last year. It was very sad. And so thank you for being here. And of course, the celebration could not have been possible. As a matter of fact, the entire tritium was so beautiful. And it was a work of so many individuals. And for that, I'm very grateful. I'm grateful for my brother's uh, deacons, for Jeff Alunga, our director of liturgy, for uh, Ben Nikolai, who um, controlled the AV, uh, Nicholas for, uh, and Angelise serving, Nick served for three days, and Angelise served yesterday and today. Our lovely Angel, a seminarian who also worked really hard. <laughs> so how nervous were you singing the Exalted? <laughs> he did pretty good. He did pretty good. <laughs> God willing, next year you can sing it longer because you can sing the clergy part as well. So <laughs> hang in there, son. And then uh, James Mosen and his choir. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Our beautiful bell, uh, bell choir has been here since, what, 4 or 5 o'clock this afternoon? Thank you for working hard to make this celebration so beautiful. Thanks to our cantor, uh, Mandy, um, Mika, Elizabeth, Jasmine, and Aaron. You ladies were amazing. Thank you for your lovely voices. And for those I might have forgotten to mention, thanking oh, our, our lectors and our Eucharistic ministers, thank you for stepping up and serving this evening. Thank you all for making this such a beautiful celebration. Let us pray. Pour out on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this Paschal sacrament one mind and heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. 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 And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten Son endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. 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 Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exalting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. Amen. Y la bendición de Dios Todopoderoso, Padre, Hijo, Espíritu Santo, descienda sobre ustedes y permanezca para siempre. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia.
safe. 